Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial. So this tutorial is about how to install Ansible Tower using VirtualBox. So these are the items that we'll be going through. So we will install VirtualBox uh, in the Windows 10 OS and then we will install an instance of the Send OS operating system within VirtualBox. After which we are going to install Ansible Tower in the Send OS OS. Then I will show you how to do a very simple Ansible ping module to ping a EC2 in AWS. Alright, so let's get started. So all the links to all the downloads will be posted in the description below so you can access them easily. Alright, so Okay, so downloading a virtual box, so you should be if you are running Windows, right, so you can uh, go and look under the Windows host, alright, and then just click on it to download the application file, alright, so that's for VirtualBox, and right, so I've downloaded, so just follow the on screen uh, instruction to install it. Right, so I will not go through because I have already VirtualBox installed. Okay, the second one is to download the Send OS VBox image. Right, so this is the URL. Okay, and uh, we can select VirtualBox. Okay, we can download the latest copy which is 8.2.2004. Right, so there are a few uh, variation here. So this is for VMware, and but we are using VirtualBox, right? So make sure you choose VirtualBox, and then click on the download. And the file that is downloaded is actually a seven zip file, right? So it looks something like this, right? So you have to uh, go and install 7-zip right so you can download the, the ESC for the Windows platform okay install it and then uh, okay right so click on it launch 7-zip okay and then look for the 7-zip file which is here right so it's about one gigabyte okay and then click on extract right and then simply extract to a particular destination okay I will not do that so after you have extracted you will look you will look something like this So this is the VBox image. Okay, next we are going to uh, add this VBox image into our VirtualBox. So here I'm going to launch VirtualBox. Okay, so I've already have one instance. So I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to create a new instance. So click on new. And then I'm going to call it send OS. So I'm in the expert mode, so you can talk. Uh, the default is the guided mode, so my advice is, is to go to the expert mode. So click on expert mode. So give a name to your uh, instance. So I'm going to call it send OS2. Okay, and the machine folder. So basically, uh, this will be the, the virtual box file, right? So they're asking you for a folder. So uh, I'm going to put it inside my D drive because it has a much larger D space. Okay, and the type will be Linux and the, the version, all right? Okay, since we cannot find Zen OS 2, so, so I guess going to just pull it as 
other Linux 64 bit. Right, so memory, okay, this is important, right? So depending on how much RAM you have, okay? So I'm going to uh, give it two gigabyte of memory. And then this is where we point to the to the send OS uh, VDI file, all right? So over here, you will choose use an existing virtual hard disk file. is created and we want to go into settings right so under system right we uh, I have four CPU so I'm going to give it to CPU and then for network right so uh, usually these settings should work for your system for port forwarding, all right. Uh, because Ansible Tower is a web app, so we need to do some port forwarding so that uh, our browser in the Windows is able to access the web server in our virtual box. Okay, so uh, we can leave the host IP and the guest guest IP as default. So for the port, we are going to put 443 because it is using HTTPS 443. Okay, I think that is sufficient. So click OK and then click OK. Alright, so at this point of time, uh, we can start the send OS instance. the right control key uh, that is to so called unescape your mouse so that you can use your mouse normally but once you once you click into the virtual box right okay then uh, your mouse will be used for this virtual box and anytime you want to bring back your mouse to normal operation so you should press the right control key right okay and the mouse will be back so once you click into the virtual box you can see the di dialog popping up okay and then if you choose capture uh, it means that now your mouse will be used for the virtual box so now we are waiting for the system to pull up the first time it is putting up will take some time. password uh, will be the default password for send OS so it is os boxes dot org 
So again, I will put the password, the username and the password in the description below. Then click on sign in. So over here, I'm just going to check that uh, the network wire is connected and you may want to go to the wire settings here Right, and click on this icon here and we want to make sure that this one is checked right? so that it's connected automatically so uh, we can launch the Firefox browser to make sure that uh, the Linux instance is getting the internet connectivity through your Windows platform Okay, so I'm going to launch the terminal. So we have installed VirtualBox, we have installed the CentOS operating system. So the third item is to install Ansible Tower uh, in the CentOS. Right, so I'm going to create a directory called Ansible. CD into the directory. Okay, so currently it's empty. get command uh, to download the Ansible Tower installation files. So all the commands and all the URL will be pasted in the description below. Right. So right. So it is done. So now is to. Unzip okay, this compressed file. So let me just copy it. Okay, so it's, so it has been unzip, and then we are going to CD into this folder. into the inventory and here we need to set the password so I'm going to call it Ansible Ansible okay and save for this Ansible okay so uh, in order for you to edit, you have to press insert so that you are in the insert mode and after you are done, you can press escape followed by colon wq right? so that is to write okay, to, to save our changes and also to quit from the VI ok, press enter ok, there's one more thing that we need to do uh, because uh, the the default memory requirement to install and server, I believe, is 4 GB. Okay? We do not have so much memory. So we need to change 
the memory requirements. Okay, so for that, uh, we will need to go into the rows and then CD into the pre-flight folder and then CD into the default folder and then we need to do VI main.yama. Okay, press insert. So unless you have allocated a lot of RAM to your send OS instance, otherwise your installation will not be able to be completed. Okay, so some somewhere it is going to abort the installation and, and inform you that the RAM is not enough. Alright, so I'm going to just put to one five zero zero okay megabytes. So it's one point five gigabytes. So escape colon wq save it. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my Ansible folder. Okay, which is here. Okay, and I'm going to start the installation process. So basically at this point of time, uh, what is happening is that the script is going to install Ansible and Ansible will then will be commanded okay, to execute certain playbook. Right? So it's running through all the Ansible playbook and to do all the various tasks. Right, so you will see a lot of messages in different colors. So if you see a message in green, it simply means that the task has been completed successfully, but nothing was changed at the uh, at the targeted destination. Okay, if it is in blue color, it simply means that the particular task was skipped. If you have a message that is in purple color, so it's simply uh, basically these are just warning, okay, duplication warning, right? So they are not error messages. Uh, if you see messages that are colored in yellow, it means that the task has been uh, executed successfully and changes has been made at the targeted destination machine. Okay, so in this case, our our targeted destination machine is our send OS operating system. Okay, so just allow all the playbook to finish running. So uh, the amount of time that's needed for this installation depends on your internet bandwidth. Okay, and also on the internet traffic at, at the time that you are doing the installation. Sometimes uh, you may find that a particular task is stuck. Okay, it's possible. So what you can do is you can press Ctrl C a few times to abort the installation process and then run sudo dot slash setup dot sh again okay and because of the item potent attribute of ansible so whatever that you have done whatever that you have installed in the first installation try okay will not be affected by the second attempt so even if you run the installation a few times uh, it will be all right. Okay, the Ansible Tower will get will get finally installed successfully. So at this point, it is 
installing the RabbitMQ service. So this RabbitMQ is a messaging protocol that Ansible use. Right, so as it is installing, let's look at this uh, Ansible Tower page. So you can see that for the latest version, which is 3.7.2, right? So the supported operating system are Red Hat 8.2 or later, and also Red Hat 7.7 .7 or later, and also Send OS 7.7 .7 or later, right? So in fact, it's only Two, two different distribution of Linux, Red Hat as well as CentOS. So here you can see that the minimum RAM is 4 GB. Okay, so I've tested that uh, if you the, the minimum RAM okay that you actually need is 2 GB. So if you only have 2 GB, then you need to uh, change the amount of RAM okay as what I've shown you earlier on to to something like 1.5 gigabyte so that the installation can continue So the playbook is still running. You may want to scrub the video to the point that uh, the installation has completed. So Ansible Tower is developed using uh, the very renowned Python web framework known as Django. So what goes under the hood? Now is a uh, Python script okay, running and uh, downloading certain files and changing the configurations. So, this is one particular task migrate the tower database schema that may take quite a while.
So the alternative to Ansible Tower is uh, is what they call AWX. Uh, it is also developed by Red Hat. So the difference is that uh, Ansible Tower comes with technical support and also uh, whatever features that has been tested they are stable. Uh, they were released in Ansible Tower. Whereas for AWX, it is more for uh, testing of new features and all the all the uh, newly created features. Okay, will be available in AWX. Okay, but you will not be able to get any technical support, and also the installation process for AWX is many many times more complicated than Ansible Tower. Okay, and that's because you have to install the various components yourself. You have to install the Nginx web server, the Postgres database server, the RabbitMQ server, okay, and many other things. Right, so you can see the setup process completed successfully. Okay, so before we try to browse our Ansible Tower, uh, it is quite advisable to uh, to actually run this command uh, sudo ansible tower service restart. Okay, so let's just restart all the necessary services for. So it's going to stop the Postgres database, the RabbitMQ server, the Nginx web server, and then it's going to start all these services again.
Okay, it's coming up. Alright, so now that our browser in ZenOS is able to access the web server, so we can try out the port forwarding. Okay, so we can open up the browser. First attempt, you will get this warning to say that the site is not secure, and that's because we do not have a certificate that is installed in our site. So uh, we can click on detail, and then we can just say go on to the web page. Alright, so now we are browsing our Ansible tower that is. Uh, running in our sandwiches, right? So the credential is admin and the password is n server. Okay, and we are in. Right? So uh, so I'm going to uh, input in a trial seven days and server license file. So uh, if you want trial license file you can reach out to me uh, I've left my email in the description below so browse okay agree to the end user right submit okay so we are in alright so Next item is to learn how to uh, use the GUI to do a simple and simple ping module test. Okay, so uh, in order to do the ping and simple ping module test, so we need a client machine. So I'm going to uh, create an instance. EC2 instance in AWS. Okay, I'm going for the free tier. Okay, T T2 dot micro. So I'm going to click review and launch. So over here, you must make sure that uh, the incoming port 22, uh, you are allowing the incoming port 22 in your AWS. Uh, because for Ansible, uh, if the client is a Linux-based machine, uh, Ansible is using port 22 to manage the client machine. And therefore, we need to allow incoming port 22. ready to launch right so let's create a, a new key pair so I'm gonna call this Sam OS right download the key pair save it so I'm gonna save it in my WSL folder 
So basically what is happening here is that uh, we are creating a pair of private key and public key. We are downloading the private key and your instance is going to install with the public key. So therefore only those with the private key will be able to authenticate uh, this particular uh, AWS EC2 instance. Okay, I'm going to launch it. Right, so as this instance is coming up, so uh, this is a public IP, so let's copy to the clipboard. Right, so let's move back to our Ansible tower. Okay, so we need to create an inventory. So this is the default inventory that uh, comes with the default Ansible tower installation. So create new inventory. So I'm going to call it SendOS. Let me just call it SendOS. So this is the name of my inventory. Save it. Alright, so I'm going to do the most simplistic inventory. Okay, so it will just contain one host. Alright, so go to the host button, click on plus, and then I'm going to call this AWS. To put in Ansible host and paste the, the IP address, right? So inside our inventory SendOS, we have one host, and the alias or, or the host name is known as AWS, and it has this IP address. Okay, click on save. And because our EC2 is uh, protected by the public and private key, so we need to set up the credentials. Okay, so click on plus. So I'm going to call it send OS as well. And the type of credential, I'm going to choose machine. Select okay, and the name of the user will be EC2 user, and then for the private key file, right? So at this point, okay, I'm going to try to drop the private key into this portion here. So send OS. Right, so we can't drop, so let's, let's open up our SendOS file, Control A, Control C, okay, and then we'll just paste Control V, and paste everything here, okay, and then click on Save. So after you have saved it, uh, basically, Ansible will encrypt your private key so that it is secure, it will not be compromised. So this credential basically store the private key as well as using the username as ec2-user. Alright, so now we are going back to our inventories. Okay, we are to test out the pin module. So instead of uh, creating a playbook setting up the projects and templates, uh, we can try out the ad hoc usage of the Ansible module. Right, so we click on the okay, the pencil icon, we go to the host, right, so we select, okay, select the host, we want to run the ad hoc command by using one of the Ansible module, which is the pin module. So click on run command, right? So we want to try out the ping module, and we want to supply the credentials. So this is a credential. So you'll be using uh, the user.
user EC2 dash user as well as you will be using the private key file. Okay, verbal city. Let's make it more verbal so that we can see more messages. Okay, and then we can click launch. All right. So you will start a job. Okay, and you can see the status here. version is 2.9.7 Python version is 3.6.8 So at this point Ansible is trying to SSH into the EC2 instant Okay, and the operation is successful Right, so we can see that the ping module return us with the message pong. Okay, success. Alright, so thank you, thank you for watching.